Slim book put out and all in one, and Ubuntu Mate brings the final 1804 beta. System 76 sets up a chop chop, and Mozilla brings a browser to VR. And opensource.com is going to be talking about video editing, which one's the best, and uh, Ryzen, second coming. We're going to talk about those prices. All that and more, because it's another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. That's right, it's time to sit back, relax, and uh, talk about some of the neat things that we personally found going on in Penguin Land. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by the uh, man on the island way over there. All, oh, I'll never get this right. It's Pedro Mateus hey, and back um, Hollywood Jill from L.A. No. <laughs> Doing that thing, man. Come oh. back. <laughs> I gotta get used to that. Hey, Sorry. <laughs> you never get used to it because your brain thinks it's like, oh, I got you this time. I got you this time. It doesn't. Nope. And it's always the other way. <laughs> then if you get really good at it, I'll flip your image. So, um. Oh, no. <laughs> Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on. Uh, not a lot to report. I was talking in our pre-show that I almost went plowing into an Aldi's parking lot that was closed off with workers in it this morning. So, uh, yeah, you almost read about me in the news. Um, outside of that, not a whole lot going on. Jill, how's LA been treating you since last week, man? Oh, uh, pretty good. I have something fun that happened. Um, here's the LGC flyer. Mm -hmm. And I went to Community Hack Night at Riot Games Monday night and handed out more Linux Gamecast flyers. And several people commented why a picture of me wasn't on the flyer with the rest of the LGC hosts. Mm -hmm. And so one of the employees said it's because Jill must be the horse. <laughs> and everyone <laughs> laughed. <laughs> It was just everyone just started busting up laughing. Hey, I keep on meaning to like <laughs> do a thing because if you don't watch our Saturday show, it's a bit more um, wild. And this one is uh, yes, Dan empty put on his horse coat. We got a great screenshot of that. And I always wanted to do like the old spices, like look at our horse now back to me now back to our horse. Our horse is now a leprechaun. Um, <laughs> Pedro, oh what have you God. been up to in Space Britannia, man? Uh, not much. I've basically been looking at uh, RAM prices because I'm trying to build the uh, the Steam Box 360, and RAM is still stupidly expensive. Why? Bring it down a little bit. No, not not if we can. <laughs> man, RAM, RAM. I I got a feeling like even when they get the fabs ramp back up for everything and uh, mobile phones quit using mm -hmm. you don't need eight gigs right now in your android device but th they're going to pull the same thing as the hard drive manufacturers did after the flood they're like no we can keep these prices like this and other yeah people are buying them like this right. so yeah <laughs> i don't know man so uh computers need ram they need love and uh system 76 is kind of a well-known name and they've uh been making their business overseas, but uh, they're going to take it back to the States. Yeah, Jill, tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. So this is awesome because it will allow them to have full creative control over their hardware manufacturing and allow them to iterate hardware and design changes much more quickly. And um, the other wonderful thing is this will not only allow them to have full control over their open software with their Ubuntu Linux-based um, Pop! OS, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but also let them achieve their dream of world-class open hardware for desktops and laptops. And they will be the first, one of the first manufacturers to do this in a major way. It's pretty awesome. Hmm. Well, um, right. doesn't Apple have a few things that are assembled? I mean, I should just say assembled because that's basically <laughs> what we're looking at. Yeah. No, <laughs> man, they're going to be moving the manufacturing currently like most places i mean it's done in china and mm -hmm. you know it's like there's a small team currently working through like supply chain development you know the manufacturing techniques and just like the refinements like how are we going to do this here in the states and they say they're going to be doing it in uh, colorado is uh yeah denver denver that's yeah. pretty decent because you know they said in the article if they're going to be able to do the chassis manufacturing i'm guessing this is going to be more for their desktops, but 
it said if they're going to be able to do that in house, they're going to be looking at things like if there's a manufacturing defect, if there's something that needs to change. They say their current turnaround time where they're at right now is like four plus months. And that's something they mm-hmm. can implement very quick. Yeah. Uh, good thing. I think that's a good thing, right? It is. And uh, System 76, regardless of, uh, you know, your opinion on it, it, it is one of the very few uh, and relatively successful uh, hardware distributors that uh, sell laptops and desktops and at one point also sold all-in-ones, but we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> uh, all preloaded. Well, why did you do that, so, Pedro? You had a really good lead into our next story and you just burned it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It is good, yes. I, I think it's good, and they have good support. They've gotten better. And if you don't uh, know, Jill is wearing her Pop! OS t-shirt. Yeah. That's... Um, <laughs> Definitely a thing. Still haven't Cut tried that it. from scale. <laughs> Going to be honest with uh, System76, a little too rich for my blood, but I uh, mm-hmm. think they do good work. High-priced, pretty, up next, all-in-ones. Oh, yes. So uh, you may remember Slimbook. They sent us a laptop. It wasn't very good. Uh, now uh, they seem, even after they've released the new uh, and supposedly improved version of uh, that laptop, they now also have an all-in-one. And if that looks tiny, that's because it is. It's a 24-inch uh, all-in-one with a curved screen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, so it comes with Cabby Lake. Uh, it has a DR4 RAM. Uh, they say it has multiple ports. You can get either the i5 or the i7 version, similar to what you could do with the uh, KD Slimbook. And, well, uh, for all intents and purposes, it is very much an all in one that seems to come preloaded with Linux. Even if all we have to prove that are uh, renders. It has renders, I mean, it, it's a piece of kit. Uh, mm-hmm. It does look a bit gimp shooped and rendered. I, mm-hmm. I'm going to agree with you. When I saw a curved monitor, is like, all right, that's the thing, because I've basically realized that uh, I'm going to end up with a curved monitor because of the ultra-wide <laughs> aspect that I want to have down here for the show to do some things. Um, but 24-inch curved, that makes no... There's no point. There, yeah. That's... <laughs> You're, you're, when you can see the curve and both edges of it and around it, uh, don't know about that. Uh, there is a upgradability possibility to hard, two hard drives up to four terabytes on this. It is a frameless monitor, so it's got that going. Six USB mm-hmm. ports. They're very proud of that. Available in an i5 2.5, i7 2.7, 8 to 16 gigs of DDR4. 32 gigs is going to be available later, according to their web zone. This kind of caught me, though. Uh, Intel HD 620 4K, not really, uh, <laughs> graphics. And I do say that because 3840 by 2160, I'm not letting this go ever, is not HD. <laughs> it's UHD. No, they it's actually, the yeah, the uh, the actual part itself, according to what Intel calls it, it's the H, uh, HD 620 UHD. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, they are calling it ultra high def. And, yeah, it's... It's still not an Iris or an Iris Pro GPU, which if you're going to be stuck mm. with an embedded uh, Intel graphics system, you kind of want that Iris. You kind of want that Iris Pro because those actually have decent performance for what is a glorified chip on top of the CPU. So well, and you, you, yeah. keep, you keep track of this better than I do because I loathe <laughs> mobile Intel hard, not just Intel, just I don't like laptops, so I don't track this stuff. Can you game decently on a 620? Uh, 620 should give you a performance uh, somewhere in between the NVIDIA GTX 910 and 920M. Like the laptop parts, the really skimpy ones that, oh, look, it's got dedicated graphics. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can in theory play on it but it is still very much an igp and it's not going to even like one of those low profiles 1030s even the gimped ones that they released with um the dr3 memory uh, <laughs> it's uh those will give you a better performance than you're going to get out of this but this isn't very clearly uh aimed at uh, gamers by any means or measure so it's it's something to look at i guess 
Jill, you really like all yeah. in ones for some weird bizarre no, reason. No, no, I, <laughs> I've always uh, disliked them uh, very much because of their upgradeability and being able to service them yourself is really a pain. Mm. You can't upgrade video cards. Um, uh, sometimes you can't even upgrade the RAM, and at least this one allows you to upgrade hard drives. But <laughs> still, yeah, it's just not. Yeah, <laughs> I always liked the idea of all in ones, but this one is just isn't selling me. Yeah. On it. <laughs> well, it's a grand twelve hundred, depending on how you want to get it configured. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see once they get out for reviews. Uh, but yeah. I think you buy something like this because it's pretty, and I got to see one of these. I didn't get to see. I want to see one of these, an actual physical one, sitting on actual physical stuff, mm -hmm. to get an idea of what it really is going to look like in the wild before I mm, even remotely going to comment on it because if it doesn't make mm -hmm. with a pretty. <sighs> It didn't, I don't well, It is an IPS screen. I guess uh, in order to keep the cost as low as possible, they can really go with an OLED or anything to sort. So, yeah. Well, it's not even the screen. I mean, it's the whole package. And yeah. all, all in ones, I like the idea of it, but Joe, mm -hmm. you know, you're right about I mean, when they when they nope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times you're just stuck with a very expensive brick after that. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Spectre's back with uh well you know about it it's a uh, intel issue also affects amd to some degree extent meltdown mm -hmm. and all that uh we've seen some performance issues and yes. especially on older intel hardware cabby will leak and before it just kneecaps it but there's a way to migrate the slowdown and actually there's multiple ways but this is i guess what would you say pedro a simpler way possibly Simpler, uh, if you're not uh, this particular person. What's his name? Uh, he writes uh, thinkpads.org, and he, uh, uh, there it is. Oh, boy. Onion Gallic. I probably butchered his name, but yeah. Uh, it, he's, uh, he's put out a bit of a kernel that's been recompiled. It's based on the, um, the 416. Uh, tree and it's been recompiled without any of the mitigations for specter or meltdown because he has a thinkpad x220 and if you have one of those old ivy bridge sandy bridge uh and before then even haswell uh has some noticeable uh performance dips with the uh mitigations so he put out the 416 insecure kernel, which uh, personally I think is a great tactic, because no one is going to want to run a kernel with the, uh, with the name insecure, and if no one uses it, you can just nope it at any point, and no one will be any wiser. Well, listen, it's a brilliant, <laughs> brilliant marketing strategy. I'm joking here, so lay off, don't, don't send the hate mail in, because even if... It's like, well, I found a problem with your curtain. It's like, yes, it says it right on the label, insecure. You, uh, I don't know with this. I mean, I've disabled mm -hmm. some of the stuff, I've, but I didn't notice a big hit on the, I have a Ryzen 7 1700. Nothing mm -hmm. that really like blew me apart. Then again. Well, there was only one Spectre variant that hit AMD, so yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. true. <laughs> and I do got to say, I mean, like for me, I'm not black helicopter enough to mm -hmm. <laughs> worry about it, mainly because the system that I would, uh, most of my time spent on tablets and I'm plugged into Google. This system doesn't have anything on it. Like if you if you get a hold of something, oh no, it, well, you have a lot of video in your hands. Uh, so let's see, probably not going to notice anything. The with Spectre, Meltdown, uh, Mitigation, you really don't even see that until you start hitting high IO. Mm -hmm. So unless that is going to be in your business, I don't see. But you can see. I mean, if his mm -hmm. uh, benchmarks are accurate, Jill, they look like, what, uh, like 5 to 7%. Jill, you still there? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the uh, 5 uh, to 7% uh, slower. <laughs> right on. So what do we got up next? Up next, we have some more betas. Yes, uh, this one is from uh, Ubuntu Mate. And the final beta, uh, 1804 Beta 2, since the uh, final version is uh, right around the corner, uh, has been put out. Uh, 
just ahead of the April twenty sixth hey, pa- pa- Pedro, Pedro, release Pedro, proper. Pa- Pedro, yes. Do you, do you like the color green? <laughs> no, particularly no. You better like the color green. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of green, but, uh, you know, it's Ubuntu Mate. Uh, you probably expect it by now if you've been using it. It's just a couple of theme changes away, and there's quite a few themes in the Ubuntu repo since this is now an official flavor. Uh, it is their third uh, LTS since becoming an official flavor. Was it 1404 that was the first one, then 1604, and so on and so forth? Or was 1604 the first one? I'm... I can't remember now. We had Martin on the show once. I cannot for the life of me remember. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. Windows applet minimal installation, Joel. What's that about? Oh, um, that's that's pretty awesome. That's that's new for eighteen oh four, and I'm so ha- happy that that Martin Impress um, um, Wimpy included that in in um, Ubuntu Mate. And what it what it does is. Um, it only installs the Mate Desktop Utilities themes in Firefox and is a great base for web and entertainment kiosks, such as for Kodi boxes and setting up dedicated Steam machines. And mm-hmm. it's really going to come in handy for me because I, I really, a lot of my boxes I like to customize. So that's really nice to just be able to install, do a very minimal installation that isn't necessarily a network installation. Hmm. Yeah, I do yeah. like LTSs. They're fun to base on. I just saw that in the comments as one of them is, please return the colors and look and feel. Um, <laughs> which the retort of that is the themes and color configurations have been moved upstream with GTK 3, so there's not yep. really an easy way to restore. You better like greens, all I'm saying. <laughs> I do like LTS. Yeah. I haven't played around with Mate by itself. I'm not really a spin person. Um, but yeah, I'm personally just looking forward to 1804 LTS. So, because I have a bunch of ideas and some things we're going to be doing on the back end technical side, because uh, not a moving target under my feet. And I, I know we're going to be able to standardize on this, but it's probably going to be some nightmare growing pains doing with that. Uh, Pedro, you've probably spent some more time with Mate than I have. Do you recommend it? Yes. If you are one of those people who did not like GNOME 3, who mm-hmm. thinks that cinnamon is a little too bloated and there's tearing all over the place, mm-hmm. because there is, uh, if you don't like the complexity of KDE, if you don't, if you think that XFCE is just a little too easy, then yeah, Mate is the perfect in betweeny uh, desktop environment. And they are uh, very much based on GTK 3 now. So. If the gnome people keep messing things up, Mate will probably, mm. most definitely, have to uh, fork the base framework at some point. No, Not saying they, it'll happen, no, but no, they it, may that, have to. Listen, that'll never happen because <laughs> you, the people need something to rally behind. The KDE people need to have the gnome people, and the gnome people need to have the KDE people. That, mm-mm. So Firefox is thinking about... They're looking at this virtual reality thing that that just might catch on. Maybe we need to get ahead of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they've announced open source AR VR web browser, Firefox Reality. Yes, that's what they're calling it. Now, there's a little bit of an article. All this will be in our show notes if you're watching after the fact or more likely you're listening. And am I getting this right? If I'm just cutting to brass tacks on this, it's a web browser for your VR headset, period. Yep. I mean, right now, it does a little bit more than that. It creates its own, like, virtual space in order to render. But the idea here is to have, like, the floating windows. Uh, You have, say, someone puts out a desktop environment to work exclusively in VR, like what we talked about a while back. And maybe you want to, oh, I don't know, God forbid, access the Internet. And you need a browser for that. This helps you do that. So, and it's good to see Bozilla actually doing it because uh, can't let Google get too comfortable, even if they are already winning by a sizable margin, but mm-hmm. you really, really want Mozilla in on this, I guess. Uh, I don't know, man. Here's the thing. With the <laughs> AR, AR, yes, absolutely. Things like this, because mm-hmm. what do we all want? We all want contact lenses with Iron Man displays. 100%. Yes. Right. That just given. Uh, 
we're a long ways out because currently I think our current gen, not think, pretty much assure you, current gen technology with uh, the new Vive Pro, the, there's a new Oculus coming out or is out, mm-hmm. and the gang of mobile, you know, you put your mobile in them and strap them to your face organ. None of those solutions are comfortable enough to the point where you're going to be sitting there saying, man, I need to look at something on the web and I'm not going to take this off. Uh, You're immediately going to, you're looking for a reason to take it off because it's like, oh, yes, an excuse to take it off. (laughs) Quite possibly. But thinking down the road to when we get there, it's nice to have this type of foundation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say good work on that. Yeah. Good work. And Jill, do you get any thoughts on this? Is this something that... uh, Oh yeah, this is something that they definitely have to uh, implement uh, to be at the forefront. And um, actually, um, I'm just remembering uh, that the the Steam uh, VR app has the Steam browser in it. Uh, mm-hmm. That's VR. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, um, and that works pretty well. That was one of the first browsers for VR. And so it's logical to have Mozilla there too in that space. Well, I understand the logical part. If you encounter a game that you're mm-hmm. playing a game or something, See, this is kind of the problem though, is you got to think about my, I immediately go to games um, mm-hmm. as to, well, if you're not gaming in it, what are you doing? Playing with the Ikea app? Ikea app's kind of neat. I admit <laughs> um, it doesn't let you build the stuff though. I, I'd probably pay a monthly subscription Ikea if I could just sit and play and build. <laughs> and um, and their AR stuff is really, uh, AR is where it's going eventually. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, AR is the future. You know, that's what I wrote in the notes. It's those shades that you put on with AR and you get a browser like the uh, Mozilla uh, VR thing mm-hmm. and you walk out into the street because you've... You, you're too engrossed in whatever you're reading and a car runs by and hits you because you weren't looking. <laughs> well, that's an interesting piece of news. I think uh, the only thing I will say, Mozilla, um, please, please support VRML in this. It'll just make me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Old people will know what I'm talking about. Oh, um, actually, it needs to be VRML uh, 3.0 because we've already had 2.0. <laughs> That, that was a sad, sad time. In the, in the it was called VRML 97. Yeah, it was quite <laughs> miserable. A little bit more on the browser news, open source floss browser, which, uh, yeah, what do you want to call it? Browser? Is, is that a good yes. name? Yes. Fair name? It, it is literally a browser built on top of a fraction of a browser, which you would know as the Android web view. And they took the web view and said, yeah, you, you know, this uh, teeny tiny embedded uh, browser that you can run for just an app and have like a single web page be an app, you know, the precursor to Electron, as it were. Uh, let's make an entire browser out of that. I can't help but feel like that's defeating the purpose a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, man, it's open source. It's and. <laughs> It is, yes. You're using this or you're using Chrome, more than likely you're using Chrome, uh, Firefox, which phew, mm-hmm. Firefox runs rough on mobile, or Dolphin. Yeah. Dolphin's still a thing. I still see like people I don't consider savvy like crack out Dolphin on their mobile. I was like, where'd you hear about that? I guess it shows up in the Play Store. Screenshots yeah. don't look bad. And um, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. This is like a genuine issue. I mean, to me, this might be one of my little bizarre moon issues. This is needs to stop because <laughs> having too many browsers and the Android browser itself, how many times have you clicked on a link inside of an app and it's like, I can open my own browser window. Look at me. And I render mm-hmm. everything wrong and nothing works. None of your passwords are sa- Look at me. I'm special. And I was like, listen, <laughs> listen, app. You got to, you got to meet chromosomes, buddy. Um, just <laughs> give me an option. Just, let's just launch chrome all the time quit trying to be a swiss army chainsaw yeah (laughs) jill yeah there's just there's already so many browsers i like to use dolphin (laughs) because it's really fast um but um and it you know it is nice that they're trying to 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 make a more streamlined browser (laughs) it is why did you start using dolphin i'll tell you exactly why i started using dolphins because it supported flash (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, there was a time where you had to have 
the transitional years. I would say what a year and a half, two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything got like over to HTML5. 2013, yeah. 2014. Yeah. <laughs> dark times. Dark times. Mm-hmm. One good thing Apple did was killing Barry Allen. Um, <laughs> good move on that. Okay. Video yeah. production, Linux. It's a thing. It's really easy to do in 2018 and opensource.com has a little bit of an article about it. Linux is a big deal in modern movie making. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, you can find, see, we all know that, but they kind of roll through what they consider to be the good independent open source and professional video editors. Their top pick, obviously, I mean, this is not a <laughs> hard one to do and rightfully so KDN live for your more company, anything more than basic. And, but I'm going to be honest with you because the second thing in this article is the hobbyist pick and it's open shot. And I'm sorry, open shot 2.0 is just not usable. It's not that that's just a bad, <laughs> bad example, but it does continue down to flow blade. Perfectly usable. Very simple. Um, haven't played around with it too much other than I've kind of thrown just a couple of videos. If you just need to stack some things, cut, trim the ends, you're good with that. Blender is also an option. If you oh, gen- look, the Emacs of editors <laughs> genuinely hate yourself that much, Blender can also make games. So, <laughs> yes, uh, I mean, for that matter, there's a video editor for Emacs. Um, of course, there is, of course, there is, <laughs> and Shotcut. Shotcut, I've not played yeah. with. I, it's one of those, oh, yeah, um, meaning to Jill. I, you've played with it, eh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's not, you know, quite as powerful as like Flowblade or Caden Live, mm-hmm. but um, it it does a pretty good job and it's stable. <laughs> Let's go. So there. it's like kind of like, like iMovie. <laughs> then they have the non-open editors, which the two editors I would consider we have two professional quality editors, Lightvox, and Lightvox is the one that you can get absolutely free, and it's useless unless you buy a gang <laughs> of plugins from them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then we or, also have. Or, Go ahead. Oh, or or the uh, the nice uh, card to do sound. <laughs> well, that the is that's DaVinci. <laughs> yeah, uh, DaVinci is completely. Oh, you were like works. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, light, light works. It'll work. And DaVinci, yeah, okay. If you want, but if you're going to be doing video production, you're probably going to buy a magic card laying around. I mean, serious pro level video production because I could. Here, here's something I'll argue, man. I mean, the two pro editors. Those are your two pro editors. On Linux, I mean, the like running gag in the KDN Live forums is like, it's time for the yearly, can we get native 10 bit support? And, you know, <laughs> and the ability to easily import, you know, red R3D files from red cameras. Uh, that that would be nice. And then there's always like, it's time for this thread again every year. And yeah, I know it's a limitation MLT, but that probably needs to get sorted. Because, I mean, you can export, you can export 10-bit ProRes, mm-hmm. but that's just padded data. It's not a real thing. And, Joe, you bring up the argument that... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> hit, hit yeah, broadcast, yeah, broadcast standard is still 8-bit. And most mm-hmm. TVs are still 8-bit, except for the new HDR sets. So for it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long time before the standard moves over to 10-bit. So for Pro, for broadcast... Uh, 8-bit is just fine. Well, you say this broadcast, and I i think anyone under the age of 30 is going, what's a oh, broadcast? Oh. Okay. Uh, We're doing that uh, right te- now. Uh, television. You mean, you mean like Net- yes. Netflix that's doing 10-bit HDR? Or you, you mean the thing people watch or the thing, oh, my grandma yeah. My grandma has some broadcast. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, she keeps it in a pin. Over the air, <laughs> over the air television or cable. Yeah, 1080 <laughs> Or satellite. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that I don't know, man. I I will eventually be playing around with the Da Vinci. It's just a matter of doing it. We use open not well, we used OpenShot for years, and what I say about OpenShot not being terribly useful, I don't say lightly because we did hundreds of episodes with it, and I did not look forward to moving over to KDN Live. Nothing against KDN Live. It's mm-hmm. Gotta completely redo a workflow. And, yeah. uh, but it, it's been fine. It works for what we need it. And I would recommend everyone get familiar with it because I would say Katie and live is friendly enough to use and it does have the advanced features. I made a little video 
um, yeah. Oh, yes. uh, a week ago for patrons. And they get it a week early because they are supporting us. Thank you. And I released that publicly. And <laughs> two people from the KDE and Live Project was like, hey, it's good to see you're using our software. And someone else came in and was like, oh, by the way, if you're going to do a dissolve, I'm just going to free, tr- free tip from old men then. <laughs> If you're doing a dissolve transition, let's say you have you know a video video and they're overlapping, if you just click in the lower lowest corner of whatever that is and you just tap on it one time, it instantly adds a dissolve effect. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> it's like, oh, now you tell me. Now you tell me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, kind of. <laughs> Walked around the house going, how many hours have I spent? <laughs> yes. Right click, mm. dissolve. No, 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 not solve. Dissolve. Good. There we go. Uh, transitions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let, let's keep the video editing train going down the tracks. Handbrake news. If you don't know Handbrake, you get done with the video. Sometimes you might want to split it out into different formats, or maybe you just need to rip those DVDs you have laying around and uh, automate mm-hmm. that business. Handbrake 11 not is out. Gang of new updates, improved Apple TV 4K support, improved QuickSync support. T- hey, look, they've added 10-bit H.265 gel. Um, yes, uh, but it's uh, yes. that same upscaling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> the big one that I was looking at is they've redesigned the UI. They've made it more, mm, how would I say, compact? Yeah, anyway. compact. Let's see if we can get over here to all to get some of these beautiful images. That looks a bit more crammed together than it was. And long, long as they don't end up gnoming it, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Judging from the screenshot, the Mac screenshot, yeah, that looks very gnomish. Well, it looks the same. Yeah. I mean, outside of the blue widgety widget sets of widgets outside mm-hmm. of that. and But the presets pretty much all seem to be in line uh did they they made some changes under the hood didn't they jill oh yeah definitely they updated all the libraries for all the video and audio co- codecs which is wonderful in fact that's where them that's where actually uh, um, the major changes are really made because that that's what improves rendering performance quality and speed so i'm always happy whenever um those libraries are updated yeah, i definitely uh-huh. use it for um, this show and for a Saturday show because we'll export a lossless um, mezzanine file, which is between like 75, 90 gigs. We use Handbrake to break it down into um, 720p and 480i, well, 480p and 480i. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. those are the ones that are available to download. And I'll make a version to feed to YouTube so it ingests it and very nice and happy. So I'm glad it's not currently updated in the PPAs right now. So you can think about building it from source like I did. I, I cloned the Git. It's like, okay, let's see. It's like, yeah. Do no. you want to get QuickSync up and running? Because uh, you might have to get QuickSync quick up and running. QuickSync? Because, mm-hmm. yes. Is that like, is it, <laughs> because, is that kind of like uh, grip and sip? I... <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's like a sippy cup, but for handbrake. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, it's one of the things that I noticed that jumped out at me. It's like, oh, proper quick sync support. You don't need to basically trick the CLI client to use the uh, VA API with quick sync enabled uh, mm-hmm. library and just it just picks up on it. It's like, oh, you have quick sync enabled. Neat. Zip. Hmm. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> um, one last little bit of video stuff. This is Intersubs. What's Intercept's an interactive subtitle for MPV? Mm-hmm. Instantly MPV. That's a name I haven't heard. If you don't know, that, that used to be how people used to watch the movies on Linux, but it's still around. It's a thing. Instantly translates selected words and sentences. Mm. What could go wrong? No, man. <laughs> we're, we're Purple looking. monkey dishwasher. Purple monkey dish. Oh, unfortunately, <laughs> Google translations on YouTube videos, the automatic translations has gotten better. But those yeah. first days yeah. were hilarious. I would rewatch shows just with closed captioning on and just laugh hysterically about malfunctioning aardvarks. And <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. Okay, now back to this. What does this do? You just say you want, you have a, all right, we're not, I'm not going to try to pronounce things because people make fun of me. Um, 
So you have German subtitles. <laughs> You're watching something that's mm -hmm. subtitled in German. You can click on that and pull up, you know, word for word, a translation to whatever dictionary that you've thrown at it. And so that, I don't know how useful this is, but this just made all my neat neurons fire. It's like, this, yeah. this is pretty <laughs> cool. It doesn't, I mean, you need a not 0.27, a MPV, Python 3, QT, it's a numpy. Mm. Lua, yeah, mm -hmm. just, mm. yeah, why not? And you don't need the local dictionaries because, hey, guess what? It can use the Google Translator. Mm. So that saves you a lot of hard drive space, and it's just you mouse over it, and the little tooltip's going to go, there you go. That's what that word mm. means, and gives you the whole, the full sentence as well, if you'd like. So, yeah, no, this is awesome. That that's a, I think maybe that was it. It's a unique way to go about learning a new language. I usually listen to technology podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like I listen to Le Rendezvous Tech, and mm -hmm. because there's enough words that I already know, tech based that then you start decrypting it from there. This is a very fascinating way to go about doing it, and it's available on the Linux. We don't have to worry about it, Jill, because there's only like what six, possibly seven Linux users in the world. Yes, um, there are four <laughs> Linux users in the world. Now. Okay, I, I just <laughs> want to point this out. Sorry to cut you off. If, if, if you're watching the video, go watch. I have the script blocked because you know it's ZDNet and they want to autoplay the video. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, watch yeah. The, the, while we're talking, there it goes, right there. The web page is seizing, trying to get the video to play because it's been blocked. Yes. I'm sorry, that yes. was just an aside I find amusing. People quit doing that. <laughs> Okay, well, well, this is uh, based on one of the many surveys of how many users are there any, anyway. And, you know, the surveys are always wrong, as we, as we know. They, just because of, uh, um, you know, various, uh, the, the way the open source community interacts with each other. And um, it, it's basically stating that there are millions of desktop Linux users, despite the fraction um, that of one percent that the net market share stack counter and digital analytics program surveys report, They're, they they can never be accurate. And I've I, one of the reasons is that these surveys never take into account, nor can they accurately count, one of the many ways Linux is shared via flash drives, ISO copies, optical media, yeah. back in the day, and virtual machine installs. And in this way, one download of a distro can result in hundreds of desktop installs. And then also, not all Linux installs, like many Raspberry Pi projects and render farm networks, for example, are necessarily connected to the internet and can be measured by web browser usage. So there, there's all these, you know, there's a lot of us desktop uh, Linux users out there that don't get counted. And also, we're you know being tech savvy Linux users. We know how to block the tracking me me methods used to generate the numbers used by these surveys. So you know, I've done it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyways, it's uh, yeah. The, these surveys are are never accurate ever. <laughs> lies, damn lies, and statistics. One thing we know from <laughs> doing a gaming show for the past five years is Steam numbers are junk. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we have people like taking screenshots and celebrating and launching fireworks whenever they get the survey. It's like, oh, look, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> correct, Amando, one hundred percent on that. It's like, what the mythical like a golden ticket, a Steam survey, which you mm -hmm. can almost guarantee, guarantee triggering it if you install Steam on your Linux box and a new wine bottle. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's like, oh, is that a new installation of Steam? Boom. <laughs> it was uh, four years before I had one. And this is not a dual booting box. This is just that box. And I've had one more since then. Have you Have you even gotten one, Jill? Um, I get them weekly. I get them weekly on, I have about six different gaming machines I run and I literally get them ah. weekly. And I think part of it, you know, I was signed up to the beta program mm -hmm. um, of Steam when it came out. So that might be part of it. And then I always, uh, well, I always ran the beta versions, but I was also uh, submitting bug reports to them. So maybe that's why I got on there on the list or something. So every week I'm, I get a 
pop up. <laughs> I think it's uh, your account logging into different hardware or what mm -hmm. it perceives to be different hardware, like say wine, uh, uh, and it just goes, "Oh wait, that's a, a new box. Wait, we need to count that." Okay, definitely. Here's yeah. a survey. But I agree with you, Joe. A lot of people block, especially if you're doing any type, you know, through web browsing, you get your privacy badgers and stuff like that. All that's going to be enabled and you know i don't know it's like do, do you count android devices do you count chromebooks mm. um well they do uh <laughs> and uh, yeah. even though chrome os is um is it's still linux an emerging hipster. market yeah. yes it's an emerging market is where i was going with mm. that it's uh it's, yeah. they've already been outselling windows and mac laptops uh on amazon for the past several years hey hey listen that's <laughs> they've made inroads chromebooks and education but you, mm -hmm. that those days are over because apple's released a like slightly oh, yeah. less expensive overpriced uh ipad with a big <laughs> jumbo crayon so chromebooks yeah, it's are not, dead <laughs> yeah it's not a thousand pounds for the ipad pro it's that uh, they're putting out yeah <laughs> it's 8.99 but sure yeah <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> I don't. Know, I, I would. I would wager one or two percent. You know, if you mm -hmm. just go by how many people do you know personally, like in meat space that run Linux, and I would say one out of every ten people that I hang around with. But then you got to realize you start tracking back that, and he's like, "But the type of people you hang around with is yeah." There's also yeah. that. See, a type of people I hang around with, I'm the only <laughs> Linux user. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I know somebody who whose grandma runs Linux, but stick around. Yes. And you will too. <laughs> uh, before we get out of here, two last little bits. One, we mentioned this mm, a couple of weeks back, maybe a month or two back, mm -hmm. but it's finally going down. NVIDIA is going to be dropping mainstream support for 32-bit operating systems this month. That's right. And I didn't have time to get the graphic from the dude from Jurassic Park going, NVIDIA's dropping 32-bit support, screaming it out mm -hmm. loud and like looking back. He's like, see, no one cares. But we thought <laughs> we'd mention it because may maybe, just maybe, it will affect someone. I really want someone to write in and say, hey, man, <laughs> this is... <laughs> I mean, legitimately going to affect you, not, I don't want to install a 64-bit OS, even though I have a 64-bit capable CPU. NVIDIA is not the problem there. Um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> do, we, do we... And the... Go ahead. The big, the big thing here is uh, the generation of uh, GPUs that they're cutting out, basically. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the newer drivers, the 64-bit only drivers, don't support for me. For me, uh, was yeah. only a couple of generations ago. Uh, since for me, we had Kepler, we had Pascal. Uh, sorry, we had Maxwell, then Pascal, and uh, Volta and Ampere are going to be coming soonish. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, dropping for me is significant mm -hmm. for me. But then again, if you are running a for me GPU, even on Linux, yeah, you're probably better off with the Mesa drivers. Yes. <laughs> Possibly. And maybe this will help them out because uh, I played around with that beta driver that they just released. That thing's mm -hmm. junk. Do you, do you want the latest 390 junk driver with the added ability not to be able to run Vulkan correctly? Mm -hmm. NVIDIA's got the driver for you in the beta branch. You might want to go check yeah. that out. Uh, they have been pooping the better uh, lately. <sighs> Anything to help them get this word out, man. Uh, Jill, do you have any old Fermi-based stuff that you I saw uh, Mr. Alert's like, yeah. oh, man, I got one of those. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in fact that's that's his main uh <laughs> his main card is a Fermi. <laughs> when what what yes. series was the Fermi's uh last? Of, of 400s uh, 500. and 500s. Of 400 500. Yeah, 400 and 500, yeah. 455. Mm -hmm. Uh mm -hmm. no, I don't have anything guys I was going to say going uh, you're going to get a free video card Mr. Alert, but I don't have anything <laughs> that new. Aww. It's like, I know I got like a 450 and a 480, but I guess that's like for me too. So. Yeah, those are for me. Yeah. Yeah. I have a five series, yeah. but. Also for me. For me. <laughs> Sorry, man. Listen, it was a thought that mattered, right? Um, 600 and 700s are Kepler. I, I yeah. know this isn't a weekly, daily hardware cast, 
But we do want to give this a mention because I, yes. a lot of us are running AMD systems, especially lately the Ryzen systems. And the Ryzen 2000 series price listed on Amazon are mm -hmm. stupid cheap. Uh, oh, yes. Better than Even cheaper than originally reported. Correct, man. <laughs> Starting with the R5, the 2600s at $200, uh, the 2600X, 229 the Ryzen 7 2700 coming in at 299 which is less than I paid for the 1700, not the 1700X that we're currently running. And the Ryzen 7 2700X with the Wraith YOLO Blinkatron cooler of annoyance, 329 That, uh, yeah. <laughs> if the uh, two, uh, 2700 or the 2700X dropped to like 250 pounds-ish, I, I don't even care. I, that 1600 is going to get an update, whether Soon. it wants to or not. Yeah, two nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to be building a uh, Ryzen rig uh, when the when the series comes out. Definitely, it's mm -hmm. time. I mean, I I yeah. actually I already have 16 core machines here with my Xeons. I've got several Xeon servers and and Blade servers and whatnot for rendering. But it'll it'll be nice, you know, if the AMD is so much cheaper <laughs> and nice <Yep>. performance. <laughs> I <w> <laughs> want want to pretend that I would be on the lookout for the 2700. Currently, right now, the 17 does. If we're going to be moving away from like the 1700, probably end up with our current moon setup. We're going to have to go Threadripper simply because of the way we have utilized virtual yeah. cams and the way they're not supposed mm -hmm. to be utilized and they're very heavy. <laughs> uh, but that 2700 might be an interim upgrade at 299. Like I said, that's less yeah. than. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, what is this like seven, six, six or seven months? I've had the seventeen hundred, and I paid like three hundred dollars and some change for it. So, yeah, I think the moral of the story is keep an eye out for the seventeen hundred series. Put some price watches because those things are going to get cheap uh, and they're cheap. Good, yes. <laughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. don't pay more for seventeen hundred X if you can find a seventeen hundred. There's. Mm -hmm. mm. We, we've proven that time and time again. So uh, we are about to talk with Chibs, and we're going to be talking mm -hmm. about not Penguin Con, but Penguin Con, Ping, what? Penguin Con. Penguin yes. Con, <laughs> Con of the Penguin. <laughs> it's going to be terrifying. Uh, not really. It's actually a very fun conversation. It was so fun and interesting that it caused our render box to pass <laughs> out yesterday when yeah. we recorded it. Yeah. So, it caused a fire. <laughs> but before we do that, we want to thank everyone who's made this show possible. If you make the show possible, join us on Patreon. We can get you some cool stuff back in rewards and you help support the show. If you've been thinking about it and maybe it's like, hey man, let's kick these uh, crazy kids a few bucks, head over to linuxgamecast.com forward slash support. We got the patron, as we said. Love everyone do that. You get access to uh, a couple of neat things. One of them is our little super secret hideaway, which is not because there's like 100 people in here. Is our Discord server. That is a very fun place to hang out. I finally, finally got around to adding the Libra Pay thing, which we've had as a th thing for months. So Amazon affiliate links. Thank you, everyone who's shopping yes. through that business, all the countries. Mm -hmm. That is available. They need to add Space Australia. We could do that. And we have a wish list if you want to help us do the cheat mode on this little $2 studio that we're trying to stick together with tape and bubble gum. That's very awesome. New egg affiliate links and Humble, along with PayPal and cryptocurrencies because mm -hmm. magic internet money gets stuff done too. Mm -hmm. I think at last check, $127 we've raised through charity with people purchasing stuff through that Humble link. Thank you for that because we do nice. get a cut. Now we are done shilling. And, uh, you know, last week, Jill's like, hey, man, you guys should do some more interviews. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we're going to do that. Take Yay. it away, other Ben. <laughs> hey, Pedro, uh, I think we're going to be able to sit back, relax uh, with someone new for just a little bit. We've we got a little bit of a segment. Somebody, a little, a little surprise, yeah. maybe? I don't know. Uh, it's a bit of a surprise. Uh, we decided to conscript someone to tell us about PenguinCon because, well, we don't really know much about it, if we're being honest. Well, I guess that's uh, <laughs> what we should do is bring in Chipsy. You know, you know yes. you've definitely seen him in Discord. He's been around for a long time. Watch the show. 
and uh, a gaming thing. How's it going, man? What's up this fine afternoon? Hey, it's going pretty good, actually. Uh, just trying to actually get all my projects done. I've got a couple of different panels at the convention that we're going to be talking about. Yeah. And uh, I'm not ready. Not ready? <laughs> so, okay. No. It's still got like three weeks, so it's fine. I I like in the pre show, we were getting ready to record this. Is it's not Penguin Con, it's Pingui Con. Mm -hmm. Correct. Why? Yeah, it's just Penguin Con. (laughs) So, so the the, the story goes back to uh, uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. There was a a group called uh, Metro Detroit Lug, MD Lug, and uh, they were trying to put on a convention, a Linux convention, and they were. Uh, tapping all their buddies who worked for the still Yagi air Corps, which was the big group that was put it, that put on all the science fiction conventions in the area. And they realized it was kind of all the same people. And they said, Hey, you know, if it's all the same people, why don't we have a science fiction and Linux convention combined? Uh, and so they put penguins with cons and penguin con. There you go. All right. All right. Is that like one of those things that you can get away with saying like both ways and no, no one's going to chase you down? <laughs> no, no, no. It's probably the most accepting group of people you'll ever meet. Well, that, that sucks all the fun out of it. Cause I was thinking about making some pink one con <laughs> shirts. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, 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 a couple of people would probably correct you, but most people would just be like, yeah, all right, way to go. There's going to be a link in the show notes. And one of the reasons I wanted to get you on, uh, because I watched a little bit of that video. It's like, wait a minute, because I, I know you've mentioned PinguaCon a few times over the years. Yeah. And Yeah, yeah. I've tried to I've tried to see if we could get a little get together going. I tried to see if I could drag you up from Atlanta, maybe drag uh the Canadian down. <laughs> it's not actually so far from where he is. Uh, well, uh, probably four or five hours drive if I don't think he drives so. No, no. But <laughs> I took a look at the video and it was, it was fascinating just because I was like, that is actually good marketing for it because, you know, I'm thinking something like scale or uh, something along those lines. This is more like a maker con, uh, yeah. con cosplay with the, it's got Linux in it, people with product in their hair and <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of everything geek. Uh, it's kind of evolved over the years. Uh, uh, I think they are on their 16th year this year, and uh, you you you'll see everything from the alt panels at night that are really alt. And uh, um, well, you're kind of seeing the video there on mm-hmm. the screen. Um, I'm given three panels there. Uh, they're Ooh. they're more Linuxy folks to focused, of course, as a rule. And, uh, um, there's lots and lots of science fiction stuff. We've had some fantastic authors. We've had Neil Gaiman. We've had, uh, Terry Pratchett, um, before he passed, Tron guy. I think he passed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tron guy is there every year. I'd go, I guess he's not going to be there this year. Uh, some of the SJW guys got into it with him over the geeks with guns, mm. uh, meet up. Mm. And, uh, so he's. Said, swore it off, says he's not going to come because he's not going to deal with this. Well, you know, drama sometimes needs to stay on the internet, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, you mentioned you were going to do three panels. Uh, which days would that be? One per day or? Actually, <laughs> they scheduled, they dropped me in the schedule all Saturday. It's it's uh, 6 p.m., uh, 7 p.m., and 8 p.m. back to back. So I'll be good and horse by the time I'm done. <laughs> Um, <laughs> my first panel is, uh, I think it's trash to tunes. It is a project. My very first raspberry Pi project it was a little bit ambitious. I'm trying to make a, a radio out of an antique cabinet, uh, using a raspberry Pi that will, uh, well, it's an internet radio. It's a radio radio. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and of course an MP3 player or flack or whatever. Um, so like it's Linux. Stuff, you can play everything. <laughs> That's pretty thing. One thing about the con uh, is there's still time to get tickets. Uh, pre-sale tickets uh, ended uh, Saturday okay. or Sunday, actually. What can you do at the door? Uh, cer- can you, certainly, can you walk certainly up, you can walk up. up. Yeah, yeah, you can walk up, and there are day passes available. Um, as you guys said, I think this is only three weeks away. May 
uh, fourth, or yeah, fourth through the what six? Yep. Yeah. And uh, I should know better, but I just know I got to get a lot of stuff done by then. My second panel is uh, is actually own your OS, which is something I've been trying to push for a while. Um, to me, one of the main things, uh, Linuxy, uh, the main benefits of Linux is the ownership level that you get with it, which you do not get with any other of the commercial operating systems. And I think people overlook that when they're trying to talk to people about why they should, why they should Linux. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but what's the normal makeup here? Because I, I'm still looking through this video and I always gauge audiences and crowds it's like, all right, how many of these people would I go drink in a bar with? And on top of that, how many would I trust to have me in a bar fight, which will end up, you know, it's going to break out at some point. <laughs> it, it, it looks like a surly <laughs> lot, but it looks like a nice lot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Everybody is, is super friend, super, super friendly. Um, probably the, 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 the one rule if the con has an overarching rule is don't judge. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everybody just does their thing and you, you know, yeah, you're going to see the guys wearing ponytails and, and sailor moon outfits, very large guys, my size guys. Uh, oh, and you're, <laughs> <yes. laughs> if you're into that, you know, okay, rock on. Uh, but, uh, and, and, and you'll see just the pure geeks who, who probably haven't crawled out of their uh, basement since last year at Penguin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, this has been growing. How, how long have you been attending to this? Uh, since the first one. Okay. So 16 years. How have you seen it grown? Has it started off with like six people, not in a base, well, six people in a basement gradually moving out or. Uh, it? it actually, it actually kind of started with a bang. Oh. Uh, we had, we had a couple thousand people the first year wow. and we, we've been hovering right around 10,000 the last couple, which is right. starting to become a problem. Uh, you know, Hotels is is always a problem because uh, we tend to want to stay where we're having the convention Makes for sense. all the nighttime parties, you know, because uh, after dark there's the room parties, and uh, I think they I think the video shows you a little bit of the room parties. The, the videos, you know, as videos are prone to do, uh, show off a lot of the cosplay, so it's probably not as heavy cosplay as you might think if you just oh, watch the video. That's the eye candy, right? <laughs> People exactly. dressed up in old, yeah. Oh, good job. Yeah. There you go. Room parties. It's yeah. uh, all the, the party floors look like that and the elevators get broken about <laughs> halfway through the convention as a rule. So how heavy is the Linux with, um, sci-fi fantasy I mean, I mean, um, ratio is what I'm looking mm-hmm. at. Yeah. I would say pr- this year it's probably a little low, maybe 30, 40% mm-hmm. Linuxy stuff. A lot of the talks tend to be more Linuxy stuff. Okay. And a lot of the event stuff tends to be more costume cosplay. Uh, there's a lot of author stuff. And like you say, there's a lot of maker stuff. Uh, yeah. I3 Detroit is very big in the maker space. And uh, so you'll see a lot of maker stuff going on there. Pretty cool. And yeah. I'm guessing it's pretty, hey, banana hammock. Uh, <laughs> pretty laid back, pretty relaxed. Like, you know, you, you don't have to say GNU Linux and worry about katanas and fire and stuff like that from Stolman appearing out of nowhere because he's a ninja. <laughs> no, actually, the one person you'll probably run into every year is Eric Raymond. Uh, Cathedral and Bazaar, if you've ever read that. Uh, so uh, he is there pretty religiously. Uh, so he's kind of a ward against the Stallman. Hmm. <laughs> Because he coined open source, which just pisses off Stallman. So, well, yeah, I'm not getting into these holy wars. Hey, Amen. We're, yeah, we're all friends exactly. here. If we're being honest, uh, everything pisses off Stallman, unless it's well, exactly true. what he okay. says. All right. So, so hang on. <laughs> I just saw something kind of reminiscent of a DEF CON badge. Is that a thing? Uh, or, or somebody just yeah. made one for the fun of it. There is a there is a network capture the flag. Uh, the badge is something they do tr- pretty much every year in the makerspace. Mm-hmm. You can make an electronic badge with flashy LEDs every year, and they open yeah. source the 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 design for the badge, so that if you want to make one throughout the year that does all kinds of cool stuff, then you can do that. 
Oh, okay, so of all the uh, the penguin cons you've been to thus far, which one was uh, like the best? If we wanted to look up videos on the internet, which one would you suggest? A lot of them. I, I, you know, I tend to like the ones that are a little more Linux heavy. If they've got a, if they've got mm-hmm. a better Linuxy guests. Uh, although, uh, 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 let me see. Ernie Klein was there two or three years ago. Hmm. Uh, Ready Player One author. Mm-hmm. Uh, and meeting him and hanging out with him was pretty cool. Wendell goes pretty much every year from uh, Level One Techs. Uh, uh, shaking his hand was pretty cool because he's. He's very shy uh, when you actually meet him in person, which is kind of surprising. <laughs> and, uh, so I'd say a couple of years ago, yeah, that was probably the one. He, right. he brought his, uh, he brought Ecto-1, which is his, uh, Delor- his um, DeLorean. Yeah. yeah. With the Ghostbusters theme and the sirens. <laughs> that makes sense. It's, you got to hey. do it right. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to geek con, just do it. <laughs> Yep. All right. Yep. That's cool. So we're going to be looking for your talks. Uh, since we got you here, we do want to ask, how, how did you get started with Linux and this open source madness that people like to uh, play with? Oh, college back when, uh, start, uh, w- way back in the day, um, probably, uh, 94 started with some Mandrake Linux, gave it up for a while because, uh, it just wasn't, wasn't easy back then. And I was lazy and mostly just played games. Okay. <laughs> so that wasn't an easy thing to do back uh, then, back. All in right. So, even, so the, you, even the Mandrake gaming edition wasn't quite. You walked away from quite. it and you came back. Are you sticking with it? Are you dual booting heathen? I, oh yeah. Come on. Uh, I am pretty much dedicated to, uh, to running two Manjaro, uh, running Manjaro here. Uh, my work laptop runs mint. Uh, I do have to have, uh, a VM for Windows for the few things that work makes me do Windows for. That's so a little bit of doobly, even. It's understandable. Yes. So I know you said you're going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi. Pri, yes, Raspberry yes. Pi radio project. <laughs> and what else do you have again? Uh, let me see. Own your OS. Own why, your you, why you should run Linux because you own it. Uh-huh. Or at least you can. Okay. And then uh, the third one is Linux for your grandmother. Uh, which is all about uh, how I accidentally uh, converted my mom to Linux and uh, how other people can do it too. I want to pick your brain on this because I always uh, have this thing when, you know, you first get into Linux, you like are prosthesizing. You're like, oh, have you heard the good word of a, you know, (laughs) I always was like, listen, if you switch someone over to Linux, to me, that's like making a baby vampire. It's like you're responsible for that thing for the rest of your natural life. You can't just run around biting people and bouncing off and like leaving these. You know, it's like I have no idea what yeah. to do. And I've seen people do that. And okay, grandmothers, I think, or grandfathers, uh, I think it's perfectly serviceable to put Linux on somebody's box, lock it down, and say, "Here, here's your web zone box," and it does mm-hmm. the it goes to the Facebooks and you click uh, on here. It goes mm-hmm. to Facebook. You click on here. It goes to your email there. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, frankly, it's actually easier for, you, uh, to, and that's part of the talk, uh, for converting your grandmother than it is for like my, your father. My father is a big ham radio guy. Mm-hmm. He's tried Linux like four times and he gets in way too deep. Even for me, I'm trying to figure out these, these oddball programs that run his, uh, radio rig. And uh, he ends up going back to Windows because there's clear, you know, there's there's simple instructions that he can follow, and he doesn't have to bother me for it. Uh, my 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 mom, on the other hand, slash grandmother, uh, she everything she does is on the on the web, uh, and these days that's no problem for for anything Linux. Uh, and the the actual story. So if you want to hear the actual story, is mm-hmm. that uh, for- she had a laptop. <laughs> She had a laptop. She loved playing those stupid, horrible flash games uh-huh. on them from <laughs> New Grounds, Fisher, man. She was in the dark oh. spots. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, uh, called me up, said it was running bad. I sent up a uh, uh, boot CD to, to run the thing so I could see if it was 
she lives about uh, 200 miles from me and I wanted to see what was wrong before I tried to drive up there. So I sent her up a boot disk and said, throw this in. We're going to run a couple of tests to see if it's the OS or the hardware. And uh, it was a failing hard drive, mm. but she was running off of that CD for about three weeks before I got up there. When I got up there, I set up, set up the whole thing, you know, put in the new hard drive, set up windows back on it, whatever. Went to go home and she said, what, you're taking the disc? I can't keep it. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, you can. Do you want it? I'll set the thing up for dual boot. And then, uh, yeah, she, she just said, yeah, it's a whole lot faster. Hmm. And, right. uh, she, now, now, now she whines and complains anytime she has to actually boot over to windows. I don't think she has in quite a while. In fact, I was about to say, I, I, even in like 2018, it would, you'd be hard pressed. Yeah. Unless you're like a, a gamer bra, you don't really have a reason to boot into windows anymore. Or, you know, you have ham radios to uh, <laughs> operate. Well, I, I'm furiously looking through my email trade because I knew I writ had written down my call sign, and I do not remember it because I suck as a ham operator, but <laughs> I have my technician's <laughs> license. So Nice. It's a lot easier now you don't have to learn Morse. Yeah. You yeah. lazy, I mean, wonderful people <laughs> that don't have to learn Morse code because that's really going to come in handy at some point. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're past that now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got a computer in their pocket. No, I think um Grandma Linux or anything like that. Grandpa Linux. Now, here's an interesting thing. In that talk we'd be talking about or, or what are your thoughts in general with this? Is do you want to go full Linux or do you just Chromebook them? Um because you were saying your Usually, mother was like, okay, web browser. I was like, well, there's a web browser, the operating system. <laughs> yeah, well, see, I would Chromebook if 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 somebody asked me. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister, in my case, my sister actually got the uh, the uh, laptop for her over my objections. I don't like laptops unless you have a need to be mobile. Uh, I like laptops. They're not upgradable. <laughs> they break down. They they're. they're they're heat monsters. They die early. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's no reason for them unless you actually need to be mobile. Uh, so I was going to build mom a, uh, a PC and my sister went ahead and bought her a laptop along with one for my sister. Mm. Uh, my mom still works. My sister's doesn't. She's my sister's run, run, ran windows when it ran and mom still works just fine. Yeah, it's just the uh, Chromebooks also have the advantage of Android apps. <laughs> um, yeah. So does my know. tablet, that's Pedro. A, that's a, so does my mm -hmm. tablet. <laughs> that's a little scary with mom's penchant for the uh, for the, the, uh, the stupid Flash games. <laughs> I yeah, trust it's, that she's not going to get into too much trouble with Firefox. But that's that was kind of my suggestion. You know, if you want to get her into. You know, the games that uh, most of everyone seems to play while they're on the bus on their phones, Chromebook will let you do that. <laughs> so, uh, no, never mind. You're never going to win this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chips, oh, uh, thanks, man, for taking the time to swing by telling us about this and letting the people know about PinguiCon. Not Penguin yes, Con. Hey, no problem. <laughs> Just to give just to give props out, uh, it was actually Jill who inspired me to do it, talking about uh, how much she loves going to conventions. Oh, straight up blaming Jill for that, throwing her under the bus, man. <laughs> we be like that. No, <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, where, where can people find you if they want to like e stalk you? I was trying to find where to shut off my phone. Um, if they want to find me, um, uh, let me see, Conried Seed. K O N R I E D S E E D on Twitter, uh, shibbered PM at gmail.com. All right. Um, All right. And if you're in the area, go check it out. Like I said, day passes are available and it looks like a really fun joint. So maybe next year. We, we do run into this <laughs> issue. We actually got to get to the point either where I can build a mobile thing to stream from or we get to the point mm -hmm. where i can hire somebody to sit here <laughs> <laughs> while where they are <laughs> okay uh gotcha. thanks again jibs that was awesome yeah so thanks guys thanks 
Back to whatever segment I'm going to blindly cut this into tomorrow. Thanks, other Vin. That was fun. I have no idea how that's going to be cut in, ladies and gentlemen. It's probably going to be very strange. And I do like strange, but hey, man, strange always gives me a bit of an appetite. Yes, and nothing satiates that appetite like some pie. Pink pie. All mode pies. And three, one, three babes bake shop. The pie hole? Oh, of course it's in LA. <laughs> That's yes. all right. Never mind. Never mind. Coming up, coming up, man. <laughs> Raspberry Pi micro SD card performance comparison, the 2018 version. Jill, you wrote yes. a gang of information. Oh, about yeah. This. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, well, this article talks about the, 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 the best uh, um, uh, micro SD cards to use that are the fastest with the Raspberry Pi and um, yeah, the standard uh, Samsung EVOs and um, uh, SanDisks and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. but I've had a lot of fun, uh, playing with overclocking the card reader, um, in one of my Raspi three model B's, uh, actually several years ago when it came out. And I was doing that to increase the read speed mm -hmm. of large video files. And, um, I noticed actually a big jump. It was like 15 to 20, 20% 20 speed increase, um, on a Samsung EVO plus. So it, right. it, it does really help. I don't, in, in the article. They they talked about um, some of the tests they de did world 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 usage, which um, um, didn't significantly increase the speed. But I have found with video files, it increased it a lot, and so have other people. I've found uh, other um, I mean, users and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Flash suffers from, right? It's the sequentials. Yeah. Uh, if you're talking about exactly. sequential speed. Even a hard drive is faster than uh, an SD card. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, definitely. But if you're talking random access, which is like saying, right. yeah. loading a more complex thing like an operating system, something like that, those random IOs, uh, they're not, you're not going to see as big an increase if you're going to uh, go full Jill and overclock the card reader with your <laughs> Raspberry Pi. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, actually, I forgot to uh, take the uh, UHS-3 uh, card that I have in my Chromebook because it's got a few extra contacts here and they're not actually using any UHS-3s in the test. They're just using regular uh, SDHCs and yeah. SD SDXCs. Damn. <laughs> well, on your Raspberry Pi, what are you wacky kids up to that requires that much performance? <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> well, um, I was using it to um, test loads actually um, for um, uh, for a friend who was doing a um, TV uh, ads ads running on TVs, like in doctors' offices and whatnot, and mm -hmm. wanted to load large video files, and um, that was uh, that that seemed to improve it definitely. But the problem with it also is that the the cards get corrupt easier because they're you know, reading and reading faster. So, so it's not good it's for like my we long term use. It's like we were not at this speed. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, just put more voltage on the pad, man. It'll fix it. It's... Yeah. No, Never that's... mind the smoke. Just increase yeah. the voltage. Genuinely not something I've ever really considered <laughs> was read and write speeds on a Pi. I've never yeah. did anything that would be misconstrued as intensive on one other than, you know, I've effectively poked it with a stick. And it's like, all right, that's thing. That's a really neat piece of kit. Raspberry Pis we've talked ad nauseum about, but we finally found somebody mm -hmm. to use a compute module, Pedro. Yes, finally. Uh, after, <laughs> what, over two years of uh, Linux mm. Weekly Daily Wednesdays, we found, yeah, we finally <laughs> found someone who actually used a compute module for something. He actually built an entire game console uh, out of the uh, uh, the compute module 3. It's not the uh, 3B plus yeah, man. compute uh, module, well, but... The... What yeah. is this? Yeah, it's a compute yeah. module 3, man. Uh Mm -hmm. Keep going. Yeah, it's uh, uh, what he was saying. Uh, if you read the uh, the details in the description, he's going like, I've seen this done before. Uh, a lot of people have tried it, but they were using the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now, the Raspberry Pi Zero, even though it's very compact and it's probably what you want to use, uh, 
because it will make your life so much easier. Uh, it also has the disadvantage of already having everything and you having to account for that space. The compute module, on the other hand, it's tiny. It's teeny, teeny, tiny. And it slots into an SO DIM socket. So if you can... Um, uh, if you have a way of getting the uh, the custom PCB, you can put one of these consoles together for yourself. Mm-hmm. It just needs the uh, it's it's in the list of uh, the uh, components. If you have a look at it, it's it's really well done. Uh, the case needs some um, filing down because that looks very clearly three D printed, but <laughs> Pedro, it looks really Pedro, really good. All right. Do you, you might not want the <laughs> Freshly 3D printed aesthetic when you're trying to (laughs) achieve an extremely, extremely low TSA acceptance factor. But but for getting your kit stolen on the subway, you you want it to look a little 3D printed. Maybe put some (laughs) duct tape around it and... Mm-hmm. No, no one's going to People are just it. going to return it. It's like, oh yeah, I found this. Yeah, you you generally say, like, oh, here, you dropped this. And... <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it is a very good use of the compute module, and I'm glad someone uh, managed to use it for anything other than turning a TV that mm-hmm. has a DDR3 uh, SODIM socket into a smart TV. They actually made a, uh, a games console out of it. Big fan. Yep. <laughs> Very good piece of good. I mean, I awesome. wanted to pick up a compute module. I never got around to it. I, I wanted to surgically fuse it with my dumb TV uh, with mm-hmm. like some two-sided Velcro or something or some tape. <laughs> More than likely it'll be tape. I'm right there tape. in the middle of the screen. It's like, right. <laughs> there. Click. <laughs> Man, I might just like pull the TV off the wall and see if I can just hold it in there with force. But just to build a little Plex server up in that. Uh, good. Consoles are fun yes. and gaming gets stuff done. I mean, sometimes that can mm-hmm. be a driving force in innovation. Jill, have you built any walk walkabout like Pi game console things? No, I haven't. But I know of course, I know someone who has. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this one is actually a grade from the Pi Girl. That, that was its inspiration. Mm-hmm. So um, that was pretty awesome. But no, I haven't. I haven't done that myself yet. Uh, using RetroPie, never been uh, into. But I know a lot of people have <laughs> mobile gaming so much. I have the original Game Boy. Yeah, had. Well, I still think I still have one. Uh, but I had a Game Boy that. Color. <laughs> yeah, actually, for me, I I don't see well, so those little screens are a problem. <laughs> so yeah, but but <laughs> but I do have a lot of them in my collection. <laughs> so <laughs> so if you like mobile gaming, maybe you can. Uh, Tell us why it's awesome. Send us... Yeah. Or if you've (laughs) built one such project yourself, send Mm -hmm. us some pictures. We'll be happy to take them. Uh, You can uh, send all that uh, fun, 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 fun nonsense uh, to uh, linuxgamecast.com forward slash contact, or you just hit the contact button and make sure to pick LWDW from the little drop-down box. But Pedro, this is a form on the internet. How do I know that you're not stealing my data and you're not the Facebook (laughs) too? Booga booga. Well, we don't really keep your data. You just need to give us a, an email that resolves because if it doesn't, the contact form is just going to go, yeah, no, that's spam. Seriously, ladies and gentlemen, that's a contact form I stuck together. I'm not that smart. So no, it's not stealing your data. It's a good way to get a hold of us. I do want to mention again, uh, best way to get a hold of me is not through Twitter DMs. Nothing personal on that. It's like maybe once every two weeks, I what's that up there? And if I don't, does it have a 99 on it? (laughs) Well, there's that. And if I don't follow you, it like puts it in this other category that I never see and uh, use the contact form. That way everyone gets a copy of this. It's easy to move around. And, um, but you can also always leave us a comment on YouTube or anything like that. It just drastically decreases the chances Mm -hmm. of it showing up on the show for no other reason than we might miss it. So uh, two little pieces starting Mm -hmm. off this week with our favorite topic. And I don't have the arch cup. Me, it's on <laughs> boom, boom in. Vent so sucks. It's it's basically Arch uh Arch comment 3.0 or 4.0 at this point. Uh why is Arch a running gag on the show? 
what would you recommend? And don't even say Debian or Ubuntu based yeah. anything. Boop, boop, I don't boop, want you no, no, out. No, tap the no. brakes on it right there. You can't walk <laughs> up in somebody's house and be like, hey, man, I demand a solution. But you can't offer my solution. You, it can't be this solution, though. The obvious, <laughs> obvious solution. You can't use that. <laughs> Okay, uh, I don't want your outdated makes me hunt for components to compile stuff nonsense. Have you ever used Dart? Uh, there is a reason I ditched Ubuntu-based distros in favor of Manjaro. Oh, you used easy mode, Arch. Okay, but please change <laughs> my mind. I want my mind changed. Also, Strider does not get to, to answer these questions because he is, uh, he is a <laughs> Ubuntu kid. Ha! No, he's a populist <laughs> kid. Ha! Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know... Limiting my choices to non-Ubuntu-based distros, Solus. Slackware. Yeah, I was just going to say Slackware as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, because it's, it, it's, or Gentoo, if you want to be. Gentoo, I, I say, oh, you see, Jill, they know. About, Emerge everything. They know Gentoo, and yeah. that scares them off. If you want to yeah. find out how little you actually know about Linux, <laughs> feed them to the Slackware grinder. Then they go, what? Exactly. <laughs> Um, RTFM and GTFO. Yeah. You got an ins mod. <laughs> you got a papers, package. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a thing. And I don't know, man. I mean, use Arch. It's a, it's a great tinkerer toy. Uh, it's good for learning. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's cause it's got the community and the community has that momentum yeah. to it. And it's, I, I don't have any hate for it. It's we've mm -hmm. explained ad nauseum. Arch users, even Arch users agree. People are like, yeah, you're talking about those Arch. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know they're there. We just didn't mention them in polite subset. company. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, it's like if an Arch user also does CrossFit, what do they tell you about first? Those people. <laughs> those people. And Flying Spaghetti Monster help you if they're also vegan. Just run. <laughs> You'll never hear the end of it. Um Let's see what we have up next. Last but not least, this comes from John. John writes, mm -hmm. I think I've learned a sensible manner. Wait, I think I've learned in a sensible manner how to edit videos from Ben Stone's <laughs> how-to videos than any other website or long drawn-out snooze fest online courses. Thanks for showing <laughs> how you do it. Keep up the great... Ow, man. Come on, great work. <laughs> Oh, it was awesome. Couldn't cut me more deeply. Ow. That's what happens when you put out useful things on the internet, Ben. Yes. Okay. As opposed to how many useful things have you put out on the internet, Pedro? Uh, remember that never winter nights. How <laughs> too? Okay. Hey, hang on. That's one. Yes. Uh, let's see. Eh, Fodunto isn't a thing anymore, so I can't use that. Oh, uh, you, you killed a distribution. Minus one. Yes. <laughs> so I'm done to not. Okay, I'll just leave it there, you know? That's Aww. fine. <laughs> I don't know, man. Jill, <laughs> you, you, you do the whole education thing sometimes. I mean, I, yes. you know, uh, I'm on a board nonprofit thing, and I hold a class once a month, usually twice a month, if I got time for it, teach people uh, lower income on how to use their Linux boxes and all that fun stuff, which awesome. I enjoyed doing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, in a past life, was a corporate trainer. Imagine me walking in to the program. <laughs> You're doing it wow. wrong. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a thing. But I, I enjoy doing so. I don't do it intentionally, though. It was because uh, we did that video, and that video was th this is how we do it. We don't have any secrets or anything like that. And maybe you can take this nonsense and go oh okay it's basically listen here, here's what it is You're like <laughs> if vin can do it i can do it i mean yeah. that's, it really should be what it is at the end of the day <laughs> but it's a learning experience like with the virtual cams and stuff that we've stuff that we've stuck together and figured out putting these shows together i think everyone should be able to get a hold of that information there's no <laughs> point in going no mine and no one benefits from that it's the open source community. It's about sharing information. It's about sharing yeah. how you got something to work, how you got something to run. It, yeah. it, it, that's the core thing. Mm -hmm. Information. That's what it's free. all about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's cool. We're not going to end on anything better than what we just did. So we're, we're just going to tap the, cre the credits. And 
<laughs> Say thank, thank you. Having on a positive note, hey. Yeah, that's Aww. what I'm saying, man. I mean, just get out while you can. <laughs> <laughs> and and hopefully I won't have any more power outages. Uh, that's what I was dealing with. I was having a lot of brownouts. Well, you're in LA, of course you. Are. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so thankfully my box didn't nope, but all my monitors noped at one point. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry. That's why there was a pause, and I was a little seemed a little confused. <laughs> yeah, you you had a couple of uh, blinks there. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There was just a couple of missing words, mm-hmm. but that was it. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> hey, beautiful, beautiful. Thanks for making this possible. LGC cares. You know we do. Love you, Dynafire. Uh, Bye, everyone. Bye, chat room.